So, uh, what what hedges do you think is most widely used? Which hedging is most widely used? Do you think forward contract, future contract on the exchange, option contract on the exchange, option contract with the bank? Forward contract. Why do you think that's the one most widely used? Maybe easier. Easier. So in 1995, 100% of companies had heard of forwards. 93% of companies had used forwards. Bank, OTC, over the counter <coughs> means this person given over over the counter means you go to the bank and get over the counter. They heard of the option, but just 48% had used. Foreign exchange futures, not so many people use that one. We said it's standardized. Not individualized for the company. Okay? And the uh, exchange traded options, again, the same, right? We can notice the standardized options is more pop popular relatively than the. It's almost the same as the futures. So, why do you think. We said why we think forwards were preferred. Why do you think the bank option here was preferred to the exchange traded option? Why do you think. Companies prefer the bank rather than the exchange. Uh, the exchange, you can trust the exchange because uh, you know the other person has to put up money first. They have to put up the money called margin. So if they don't, if they don't keep their side, you can take their margin, right? So you can trust the exchange. Not so much trust, right? Another reason. Bank option is personalized, okay? Customized, individualized. Do you know customized furniture? Yes. Customized furniture, furniture made just for you. You have a corner in your house, which is a strange corner. You want to make the furniture just for you. Okay, special type, that's customized. Okay? So, <coughs> you said that the forward contracts are easier to understand. Forward contracts, can be tailored to our specific need. There is no upfront cost. We don't need to pay cash now. With the options, we need to pay cash now. Premium, okay? Okay, this is tailored. Here they, we said personalized, individualized, customized, tailored. Tailored, you make suit. It's tailored for your specific size, okay? To our specific needs. Exchange traded contracts are not, they are standardized. So just a note on money market hedging for, for smaller companies. We can make a simple, we, we mentioned just briefly before, but we can make a simple, simpler way even. Uh, this is called money market hedge, okay? So we just borrow or invest in the foreign currency uh, instead of using the forward or option contract, okay? So offsetting an open long position. So the long position, are we receiving money or paying money? Long receiving. For, we're receiving the foreign currency, right? Then we need to make a short position to balance out. How can we make a short position? In this case. So we have a long position, we're receiving the foreign currency, but we want to make a short position to balance out. Make the loan, right? So we've got an account receivable. So if we make short, is going to be a loan. We have to make a loan in the foreign currency, right? So in this case, we're receiving, right? In this case, we're paying. We have to pay the loan, okay? Do you understand loan? Yes. So we have this position, we're going to cancel out with this one. Okay? So practically we're receiving in 30 days we receive one million dollars, right? 
we're in Korea. Okay? So now we, what do we do? Get a loan of one million dollars today. Okay? What are we going to do with the dollars when we get them? What are we going to do with the dollars? Dig a hole and put them in the ground? Wait for 30 days? And pay back. What are we going to do? Put the dollars on our head? In a big bag? Have a big party? We throw all the dollars all over the place with our friends? Make some photos? Burning the dollars? What are we going to do with the dollars? There's only one thing we are going to do, really, practically. Can anybody tell me what that is? Hmm? We're a Korean company. We eat. We're getting dollars in 30 days, but we want to lock in the exchange rate. Who do we need to pay? Who do we need to pay with the money we're getting? We're getting money from the US company. We have an account receivable. We sold them bicycles. Okay? Who do we need to pay? Employees. Are they going to accept American dollars? No. So what are we going to do with the American dollars when we get a loan? Change it. Okay, we're going to change. Now we get a loan of dollars. Change it into Korean won at today's rate. Okay? It's like fixing today's exchange rate. Okay? So we just changed it into one early. Okay? Do you understand that idea? Yes. Today's rate. Okay, how are we going to pay back the loan? We just changed all our dollars into one. Where, how are we going to pay back the loan in dollars? Start panicking, we don't have any dollars. How are we going to pay back the loan? No. We're receiving dollars in 30 days, right? From our customer. Maybe we can start panicking if our customer doesn't pay us. Okay, they go bankrupt. Then we can start panicking. Where are we going to get the dollars, right? But hopefully our customer is going to pay us after 30 days. What are we going to do with the dollars when they pay us? Have a party? Pay back the bank. Okay, do you understand that transaction? <coughs> okay, so we, we managed to change the one the dollars to one at today's exchange rate. So we got today's exchange rate. So in this case, there's no risk. Okay? The risk is that the dollar could have got a lot weaker. After 30 days, we would have gotten a bad exchange rate. But we want today's exchange rate. So we get a loan in dollars now, exchange it to one, and then pay back the loan with the dollars we get in 30 days. Does anybody have any questions about that? No? So the US firm expects to receive a million dollars, a million pounds in one year. The US firm can make a forward contract, they can purchase a put option, or they can use a money market hedge. Money market hedge, borrow pounds now, change the pounds into dollars at the current spot rate, at today's spot rate. Number three, when we receive the payment of pounds from the British company, use these pounds to pay off the bank loan. Okay. So the loan is making a short position, which balances out the long position. And so that is money market hedging. So let's see an example, practical one. So the US firm has a one year open long position. They're receiving the money. This is the spot rate. Okay, The one year loan rate in the UK is here. So I have to borrow the money from the UK. One problem with this is I need to pay interest, right? So I need to pay the interest rate on the loan. Okay, so the, one of the reasons companies don't do this as much is the interest rate on the loan and the deposit is going to be different, right? Too different. Do you understand? Yes. Forward rate is calculated by the difference between the interest rates. Okay? But money market hedge we're talking about the difference between the loan interest rate and the deposit interest rate, as well as the difference between the interest rates. Okay? So obviously the bank is going to lend money more expensive than you can deposit. Okay? So the loan payments total in one year will be this much. So we, we borrow this much money. 
then we don't have to borrow all the money because we're going to deposit it, right? Or sorry, we're going to get uh, the money back. So the total pay loan payback in one year will be this much. And then we swap this money into US dollars. We receive this much dollars and we, we can uh, deposit the dollars. Then we use the 1,000 pounds we receive at the end of the year to pay back our loan of 999970. Okay. So we didn't need to get the loan for the full amount because we were going to get interest on the money. So the question is what has the firm accomplished? What did the firm accomplish by doing this? Money market, thank you. Can anybody answer? You understand accomplish? Why did the firm do this? What, did, what is the end result? They might lose a little bit of money on the difference between the deposit and loan interest rate. But what did you say? What's the point? So you mean to lock the exchange, today's exchange rate, right? So they're fixing the exchange rate at today's exchange rate. It's a little, they're just changing the money early. It's changing the money early. Okay? Instead of next year, they're changing the money now. Okay? Do you understand that idea? So by changing the money now, they're getting the exchange rate of today, it's sure. <coughs> so the, it has offset its foreign currency loan position with the foreign currency loan. Offset means balanced out the two positions. It's converted its foreign currency loan position into its home currency and has received its home currency now. So it's received its home currency early, one year early. Okay. The firm has hedged against the weakening of the foreign currency. But just like a forward contract, we cannot benefit from a favorable change in the exchange rate. Okay. It's just fixing today's exchange rate. So let's look at hedging the short position. So in this case, we're going the other way. Short, payable. We need to pay the foreign currency. So what are we going to do to balance out? We have a short position. We need to pay the foreign currency in one year. What, are, what do we need to do to balance the short position? Long position, very good. <laughs> okay. So what is a long position? What does that mean? What do you think? In the short position, we got a long. So what are we going to do for the long position? Deposit, right? Invest or deposit. Face the opposite of borrowing. So we could use a forward contract, we could use an option contract, or we could use the money market hedge. So we need to pay pounds in one year. So what we're going to do is swap, borrow dollars, swap dollars into pounds, and invest. Deposit our pounds into some. UK financial assets, like bond. Okay, in one year, when the pound-denominated financial asset matures, use the proceeds to pay off the accounts payable. So long, we're going to invest the money. Okay, invest foreign currency. In short, we borrowed the foreign currency. Okay, this time, we're going to invest the foreign currency. So. This will offset, to understand offset, like balance, the long position. So let's look at the practical, go through the practical example. We have a one year short position of 1,000 Great British Pounds. So it means that we need to pay, pay 1,000 pounds after one year. Okay, we bought some uh, bicycles from the UK and we're paying them after one year. This is the current spot rate. What is the risk? 
If we wait for one year to change the money, what's the risk? We have a short position. We have to pay the pounds. What's the risk? Foreign currency gets stronger, okay? So to eliminate that risk, we're going to change the money today, not next year, okay? So we're going to need a lot of dollars to do that. So we're going to get uh, our dollars from the bank, and we're going to change them into pounds. Let's say that the interest rate in the UK is 8%. We deposit this money in the UK, just this much, not 1 million, okay? Because we need 1 million at the end of the year. So we deposit this much today, we get 8% interest, and that will be 1 million at the end of the year, okay? So if you multiply by 1.8, it's about 1 million pounds. So we borrow this much dollars, change our dollars into pounds, okay? Swap out dollars into pounds, invest the pounds in the UK or in the bank, in the UK pounds deposit account. Did you know in Korea, some banks, you can deposit your money in US dollars? If you want, you can change your saving account to US dollar. Problem is, you won't get as good interest. You'll get lower interest, right? And uh, at the end of the year, get back our investment, pay the pounds. Pay back. The bill. So the same again, what have they accomplished? They've offset the short position with the long position. It has converted its liability and the foreign currency into a home currency liability. It's hedged against the strengthening of the foreign currency. But it cannot benefit from the favorable change. What would be a favorable change in the exchange rate? Pound to get weaker or stronger? Weaker. Weaker. So if it gets weaker, did we benefit? No, we already changed the money at 185, right? We'll be sorry. We'll say, oh, we should have waited. We should have waited until the end of the year and then change the money. Right? So discuss with your partner about money market hedging for a long and short position. So you're working for a company. You have account payable in dollars, OK? And you have account receivable in euros. So discuss what you're going to do. Okay? Long position, account receivable in euros. Short position, account payable in dollars. Okay? So you're working for the company, small company. So you're going to do money market hedge. So I'll discuss with your partner. How are you going to do the money market hedge? For dollars and for euros. One is account receivable, the other is account payable.
기본적인 네. 금액 팔겠다 해가지고 큰 자살, 큰 자살 만들어서 네. 그걸 나중에 1년, 2년, 3년 있다가 갚는다고 계약인 거지. 그쵸, 이거 금융 계약인 거지. 그래가지고 지금 현재 너가 예상했을 때 향후에 내가 지금 이 돈이 약세가 된다면 어떻게 될까 생각하면 지금 비싸게 팔고 나중에 싸게 사가지고 다시 갖고 오면 너가 이익을 보는 거잖아. 그렇기 때문에 이제 그걸 예상을 하는 거지. 떨어질 것 같으면 쇼스파스는 이제 향후에 그 포드 포스가 오를 거라고 생각해서 미리 지금 떨어지는 거 포드 포스 넣어서 금액 오를 거야. 지금 판다고향후에그 갚아야 될 돈이 떨어질 거야 이게 사실. 나중에 갚아야 되는데 그 금액을 그러니까 같은 원화로 갚은 건 의미가 없지만 외국 돈은 싸질 수가 있잖아. Okay, so t r a t i n in the first one. We have a short position. So you're working for a small Korean company. They are going to receive, or they they have to pay. You have to pay one million dollars after one year. So what are you going to do? Money market hedging. How can you do that? What do you need to do? You're working for the company. They're getting one million dollars in one year. They want to fix the exchange rate, but they don't want to do a forward or option contract. They don't have. They think it's too much messing about calling the bank and doing those things. So, what are you going to recommend? Just wait, and maybe we'll need to pay a lot more. Dollar one to buy the dollars after one year. If the one gets weaker, what should you do? Can anybody tell me? Yes. Yes. So how are we going to do that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so what? What are we going to use to buy the foreign currency? Yes, but at the very start, where are we going to get the foreign currency from? Hmm? To deposit. We're going to borrow the foreign currency and deposit the foreign currency. Does that make sense? Borrow at 5% and deposit at 3%? Swap from what? But we're going to invest the foreign currency. Why would we swap from the foreign currency to the local currency? Yeah. So it should be the other way around. Right? We have to swap from our currency to the foreign currency early. We have to pay $1 million after one year. Okay? What do we need to do? We need to change Korean won to American dollars. So we have to decide, are we going to do that after one year, or are we going to do that now? Which do you think is better, do now or do after one year? Depends on your expectation, but which do you think is better generally for companies, to have a stable exchange rate or an uncertain exchange rate? So what are you going to do? Now, right? So you need to get your currency, either from your savings or get a loan, of your currency, change to the foreign currency now. Then, you said, invest the foreign currency for one year, okay? And then you're going to have it at the end of the year to pay back, okay? So then the second one, 
the money marking a hedging for the long position. We have an account receivable in euros. So moon to one. What should you do? You're going to get euros after one year. But your company doesn't want to do a forward contract or an options contract. So what can you do instead? to do a forward contract or options contract. It's just a small company, so they don't want to call the bank and organize those things. So what can you do instead? If the company paper stabilized, yes. then I'd rather change it to domestic currency. So you're going to get, uh, how, how, but how, what are you going to change to domestic currency? Yeah. Euro. Euro. Euros, right. So where are you going to get the euros to change to the domestic currency? Where? Yes. You're not going to receive your accounts receivable. You're not going to receive the euros until one year later. So where are you going to get the euros now? You're correct to you change the euros into your local currency now, right? But where are you going to get the euros from? What's that called? What's that called when you get money from the bank? Loan. No, no. no. Right, so you get a loan of euros now, change it to the foreign currency. It's already been done. Okay, you've already done the transaction one year early. Okay, so you've got, you get the stable exchange rate. Okay, does everybody understand about those two transactions? Doing it one year before, basically. Right? So that we can have a stable, we can be sure about the exchange rate. <clears throat> which one do you like the best? Of course it depends on the situation, but which one do you like the best of? Options, money market hedge, or forward contracts? Money market, forward, options. It's different people have different opinions, right? And depends on the situation. So what we're going to do is we're going to study a case study of a company uh, which had that kind of problem. They had to decide what to do, to use forwards or options or do nothing. Right? They're not considering money market hedging, right? Just do nothing, use forward contracts, or use hedges, okay? Is there anybody here who would like just to do nothing? Thinks do nothing is the best one? No? We looked already at the case of Lufthansa, but this one is a little bit more detailed, okay? So this company is called AIFS. So what they are is they are an American company and they organize high school travel. Do you understand high school travel? Student exchange, do you understand student exchange? Yes. Okay. So they are sent, their revenues are in dollars but their costs are in euros and pounds. So we're just going to read the introduction and the conclusion, right? Just at the start to get used to it. <coughs> so what are they? Long, or long, their revenue, they get the money from the customer, from the high school student in the US, right? That is their revenue, okay? They have costs in euro or pound. Why? They have to pay, let's say, for example, hotels, food, okay? So are we dealing with transaction exposure or economic exposure? Are we talking about known future cash flows or unknown future cash flows? When we're talking about revenues and costs, we're talking about economic exposure, okay? Transaction exposure, export or import. We made a contract. We know exactly how much it is. Okay, transaction exposure is simpler. Economic exposure a bit more complicated. Do we know exactly how much it's going to cost for food in Europe next year? 
Do we know exactly how many students we're going to have in the end? No, we don't. Okay, but we have to make decisions now. Even though we are not sure about how many students we're going to have and how much the costs are going to be. Okay? So, <laughs> this is their business. It organized the trip from the US to Europe. Okay? So, that's just, uh, it's just an example of a company that we want to understand about, a company which has to think about hygiene. Okay? So usually the company uses forward contracts and options to stop it from getting what? Damaging exchange rate changes. Okay? What is the risk for this company? Revenues in dollars, costs in euros. What's the risk for the company? Dollar depreciates, the do our revenues go down, the dollar gets weaker, right? And these ones get stronger. So we get some revenue from our student based on the current exchange rate. And then everything in Europe gets more expensive. The euro gets much stronger. So we lose money. We don't make any profit. Do you want to do that business if you don't make any profit? No. Or if there's a risk of losing money? No. Okay, so what do we need to do? What does the company need to do? They need to decide. Are we going to do nothing? Are we going to use forwards? Are we going to use options? What are we going to do? So that's the introduction. Let's look down at the conclusion. This is in the readings, right? Uh, so just in the end, we have to look that there they have these choices. Do nothing. 100% hedge with forwards, 100% hedge with options, and we have, it could be a stable dollar, it could be a strong dollar, or it could be a weak dollar, right? So we want to see what's going to the effect be. We'll have to make an Excel spreadsheet if these things happen, okay? So, also we can say, uh, if we have more people or less people, here we can say, if we have a sales volume of 25,000 participants, or maybe we have 30,000 or just 10,000. Here they said, given AIFS experience after 9-11, what do you think happened after 9-11? Revenues go up or revenues go down? Why? Why? So what? So what? People think that uh, America is the American currency is stronger because their plane is dangerous to Maybe they're afraid of flying, right? If there was some bomb on the planes, okay? Or maybe they're afraid of a terrorist attack somewhere. So they just want to stay at home, okay? So when there was 9 11, their revenues went down a lot to 10,000, okay? So they have this kind of, another kind of, you know, their revenues could go down a lot. They could have a lot less revenue. That's another type of problem they can have, okay? So they have to think about the exchange rate risk, okay? What can happen in this case? And they have to think about the participants. They might get a lot less revenues. So what they're going to do is they're going to make a lot of different assumptions. Do you understand assumption? Assumption, we get this many students, we get this many students, right? The exchange rate changes to this, the exchange rate changes to this. So we're going to make some different assumptions which is going to help us to assess our policy, okay? So what should we do? Okay. Basically, they have an often debated question of the options percentage. How much percent should we use options for hedging, okay? So that's really what we want to get an idea of this. Okay, so we want to find out what is what kind of hedging program are we going to use. So then that is the introduction and the conclusion. So I'm just going to go through the, the this case. Uh, we're going to focus more on the spreadsheet and so on, right? But 
we're going to skip about their business model. We don't really, when we do a case study, their business model is not the key issue. What is the key issue of this case? What do you think? We just looked at the introduction and the conclusion. What do you think is the key issue or the key problem here? Like how much options or how much forwards should we use, right? What percentage of options or forwards should we use to hedge the risk, currency risk? Okay, that's the issue of the case. Is this part relevant? Their business model, how they make, they they how they're divided up into different departments: college division, high school travel division. No, right? So here we have catalogs, guarantees, and pricing. Do you understand catalogs? So catalog is like, I have to print a document which gives you the price. Okay, so I come around to your university. I give you a catalog. Do you want to go to Europe? Okay. I need to write the price in the catalog. Can I just say to you, do you want to go to Europe? I'll tell you the price in June. <laughs> just before you go. The day before you go, I'll tell you the price. Could be anything. Do you want to go? No, so I have to put the price today in my catalog, okay? So their, their business was catalog based. So they have two main catalogs in a year, one in the summer and one in the fall, okay? Uh, can we change the price after we give the price to students in the catalog? Can we say, oh, I'm sorry, the euro got stronger, so it's going to be more expensive now. I have to put up the price. Can I do that? No, so I have to make the fixed price earlier in the catalogue for the students. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> so then we move on to this H3, hedging at IFS, IFSS. So they have three types of risk here. Okay, the bottom line risk is the risk of the adverse change in the exchange rate. Do you understand adverse? Is that a positive change, favourable change or not favourable change? Not favorable change, right? So we have an adverse change means a bad change in the exchange rate. So here they give an example. Say you have costs of 20 million euros, right? So we have costs in euros of 20 million. That's a lot. It's a big program, right? A lot of students. Okay, and we make our catalog price at parity with the dollar. So the catalog price is one to one. So how many dollars is their revenue at one to one? 20 million, right? Now, let's say that he says the dollar goes to 130. Okay? So it's a move, it's 30% of Euro 20 million. It's a move that would take you out of business. Okay? So the dollar is quite strong here. Then if we change this to 130, we're going to get lose 30%, right? The euro is going to be 30% more expensive. Okay, so we're going to need more dollars to get 20 million euros. How much more dollars will we need? 30% more, about 27 million dollars, okay? In this case, 27 million dollars will be 20 million euros, right? So sorry, more accurately, 30% is, is going to 26, right? So this move would take him out of business. Six million, six million dollar swing. Here he got 20 million in this year, right? In September. Then next June, he needs 26 million to pay the costs. Where is he going to get the 6 million from? Okay. So he lost, more, he lost 6 million dollars. He's out, his company is bankrupt. Okay, that's what he says, it could be out of business. Okay. Second was the volume risk. Do you understand volume risk? Well, in this case, we're talking about the foreign currency. So if we make a forward contract, uh, if we make a forward contract and say we only get 10, uh, 10 million students, then we are going to have 10 million too much uh, euros. And then if the euro gets weaker, we could have a problem. Okay? So let's say we make a forward contract. There's no gain, no advantage, right? But we make a forward contract for 20 million. But in the end, we just get revenues of 10 million. Well, we have already made a forward contract for 20 million euros, okay? So we now have 10 million euros we don't need, okay? 
if the euro gets weaker, then I, I need to change this money back to dollars because I live in the US. Right? Euros are no good to me. So the euro got weaker. When I change this back to dollars, I'm going to lose money. Do you understand that kind of risk? So this is with this kind of risk we don't have with transaction exposure because we know exactly how much there is. But with economic exposure, we have this kind of volume risk. We're not sure how many customers we're going to get. If we get a lot more customers or a lot less customers, we're going to have risk on the foreign exchange. Okay? And then third was the competitive pricing risk. So we can't change our price. No matter how much the exchange rate changes, we can't change our price. Like the airlines, right? The oil price goes up, but you already bought your airline ticket. Can they change the price later? You bought your ticket for next March already? They can't change the price. Okay? So the hedging activities usually started six months before the pricing date. Okay, so we saw this year the euro did change 20% in six months. Okay? So imagine that if for them the, the dollar got 20% weaker in six months, it could push them out of business, right? So they need to do the hedging activity six months before the time, right? So here is the timeline for pricing and hedging. So July 2003, pricing and hedging for summer 2005 and spring 2005, fall 2006. So they're even two years ahead here, okay? And then, then they start their sales. So they, first they have to do their, make the price and do the hedging. Only after they made the price and do the hedging, then they can go to the university with their catalog or the high school with their catalog. Okay, so we have to do our hedging earlier. Okay, so <coughs> we we don't have to hedge everything at the start. We can hedge just as we go along. Okay, so just before the next class, just uh, look through this. There is just one, two, three pages left here, right? From from this one here. So from page. Four. Okay, we're going to talk about this in the next class. Okay, but you can. It just helps if you have a look. We already read the conclusion, so it's just a couple of pages from page four, page five. Just page four and page five, really. Okay, just two pages. If you like, you can look at some of the details here, uh, like some of the graphs. Okay, and then we'll discuss more in the next class. Do you have any question? This is on the reading, okay? So just read page four and five. Uh, it's in the readings. It's uh, week nine, hedging, foreign exchange risk, PDF.